Welcome to your deep dive. This time, we're uh, we're taking a trip down memory lane to revisit some of Tech's biggest face plants. Oh, yeah. We're not just here to laugh at their misfortune, though. Yeah. You've given us a ton of material on these flops, and we're digging deep to uncover what went wrong and what we can learn. What's fascinating about these cases is how often they involve brilliant minds, cutting-edge technology, and yet they still crashed and burned. Right. It really highlights that success in tech is about more than just a cool gadget or a groundbreaking algorithm. Okay, so strap in because we're starting with a bang. Yeah. Literally, remember the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, the phone that turned into a pocket-sized inferno. I'm still finding memes about airlines banning it. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. iconic. The Note 7 was a PR nightmare, no doubt. What makes it so interesting is that the concept wasn't flawed. Right. People were hyped for that phone. But the battery issues, those were a major oversight. Yeah. It underscored how crucial thorough testing and quality control are in product development. Yeah. A single component can make or break even the most anticipated release. It's a good reminder that we're not always early adopters. Right. We're often beta testers with wallets. Yes. Especially with tech that literally explodes. Yeah. Speaking of testing, or the lack thereof. Okay. Apple Maps. Don't get me started. I swear it once tried to send me to a non-existent address. Twice. The Apple Maps launch was rough, to put it mildly. People expected Google Maps level accuracy, and Apple just wasn't there yet. Nope. It shows the importance of user experience and how a bad one can damage even a tech giant's reputation. It's like you had one job, Apple Maps, get me from point A to point B without a detour through the Twilight Zone. But sometimes the issue isn't just a buggy launch or bad UX. It's building something nobody asked for in the first place. Cue the sad trombone for the Juicero. Oh, the Juicero. A $400 juicer. Who on earth thought that was a good idea? The Juicero is a cautionary tale about over-engineering a solution to a problem that either didn't exist or had a much simpler fix. Yeah. You and I both know a good old-fashioned elbow grease works just fine for squeezing juice packets. Yeah. It speaks to the importance of common sense and product development. For sure. Just because you can build something with high-tech bells and whistles doesn't mean you should. The Juicero should come with a side of humble pie. <laughs> Speaking of tech, that felt more like a punishment. Can we talk about Clippy? That little paper clip was the bane of my existence back in the day. Oh, gosh. So, helpful. Not Clippy and, to an extent, the entire Windows Vista era were object lessons in how not to design user experiences. Right. Functionality is just the baseline. Oh, great. If it's not intuitive, user-friendly, and, dare I say, enjoyable, people will revolt. And revolt they did. Vista was basically clippy on an operating system-wide scale. Yeah. But pivoting to a different kind of misstep. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about products that were ahead of their time. Maybe a little too far ahead. Google Glass, anyone? I still remember those early images. It was like something out of a dystopian sci-fi film. Google Glass faced a few hurdles right out of the gate. Privacy concerns a hefty price tag, and importantly, a lack of compelling use cases. Yeah. People weren't quite ready to rock a computer on their face. It proves that even with revolutionary tech, timing is key. It's like they skipped a step. Yeah. You can't just hand someone a jetpack if they're still figuring out how to ride a bike. Right. Speaking of missing the mark, remember Microsoft's attempt to dethrone the iPod, the Zoom. The Zoom was a solid product, actually. It highlights a different point. Failing to adapt to a rapidly changing market. By the time it launched, Apple had already won over music lovers. Microsoft was playing catch-up in a game they didn't realize had already started. It's like bringing a flip phone to a smartphone fight. You might have a great design, but you're fighting the wrong battle. Speaking of mistimed battles, remember the Amazon Fire Phone? Amazon's attempt to bring 3D to our pockets. Talk hmm. about a burn. The Fire Phone is a fascinating case. It had cutting-edge 3D technology, yet it flopped spectacularly. What's interesting is that it wasn't the tech itself that failed, but rather the lack of compelling content and the fact that consumers simply weren't clamoring for a 3D phone experience. It reminds us that innovation for innovation's sake isn't enough. Right. You have to solve a problem people actually have. They say failure is the best teacher, and we're getting quite a lesson today. What's fascinating to me is that these are all companies with brilliant people. Yeah. Resources they could throw at a problem, yet they still stumbled. And that's what makes these tech tales so intriguing. They remind us that success is a complex equation. It's about market forces, user needs, and a good dose of timing. Mm -hmm. We can dissect these failures, learn from their missteps, and maybe avoid making the same mistakes ourselves. 
So while we might chuckle at some of these tech fails, there's a gold mine of lessons buried in these digital dinosaurs. So it's like a tech cautionary tale buffet. Yeah. But instead of getting indigestion, we're getting insights. Right. Exactly. And speaking of cautionary tales, we can't forget about Facebook Home. Remember when Facebook tried to take over our phone screens? Oh, man. Facebook Home. That was like walking into your living room and realizing Facebook had redecorated with your teenage diary entries plastered on the walls. A little too personal. I think that's a great analogy for what went wrong. Facebook Home highlights the fine line between innovation and intrusion. People want connection, but they also crave control over their digital lives. Facebook Home bombarded users rather than enhancing their experience. It's like, hey, you like Facebook, right? We'll have all the Facebook all the time. It's no wonder people hit the uninstall button faster than you can say privacy settings. But, you know, it's interesting how often these companies seem to miss the mark on understanding what people actually wanted. Absolutely. And that's why understanding your target audience is critical. It's not enough to have amazing tech. You need to solve a real problem for real people. Take Betamax, for example. Technologically superior to VHS in many ways, yet it lost the video cassette war. You're telling me, I grew up in a Betamax household, and let me tell you, it was rough trying to find movies to watch Blockbuster was VHS Central. Betamax is a classic example of how market forces like industry adoption and clever marketing can overshadow technological advantages. Sony focused on picture quality while JVC who backed VHS, focused on recording time. Consumers, it turned out, cared more about recording their favorite shows than slightly sharper images. So even a better product can lose if it doesn't connect with what consumers actually prioritize. It's like that old saying, you can lead a horse to water. But you can't make it drink precisely. And that brings us to another important lesson. Sometimes the most innovative tech gets lost in the noise if it doesn't have a clear purpose or benefit for the user. You're talking about products that are solutions in search of a problem, right? Kind of like those gadgets you see on late night infomercials. Exactly. And that lack of a clear purpose is often what trips up even the most well-intentioned tech end. Think about it. Every one of these failures we've discussed today had significant resources, brilliant minds behind them, yet they still stumble. It's almost comforting in a weird way. Like, even tech giants screw up sometimes. Mm -hmm. But hopefully they learn from those mistakes, right? Ideally, yes. Because embedded in these tech train wrecks are valuable lessons. Okay, so if we were to sift through the wreckage of these tech dreams, what are some of the most valuable nuggets of wisdom we could unearth? Give me the top three tech fail takeaways, the kind of wisdom you just don't get from a software update. Well, first off, we've got a stress testing. Not just the does it work kind, but the does it work the way people expect in the real world kind. The Note 7, Apple Maps, even Clippy in a way, those all suffered from not truly grasping how users would interact with the product. It's like they built a car with square wheels and were surprised when it didn't win any races. Testing, <laughs> testing, testing. What else? Second, and this echoes what we discussed with Betamax, knowing your market is as vital as knowing your product. What? What problem are you solving and for whom? The Fire Phone had dazzling tech. But nobody was asking for 3D selfies back then. It's easy to get blinded by shiny features and forget that people use products, not spec sheets. All right, drum roll for the final takeaway, please. Adaptability. The tech landscape shifts constantly. The Zune, while decent, couldn't compete with the iPod's ecosystem that was already booming. You've got to be ready to iterate, pivot, even scrap a project if the market says no thanks. So it's not just about launching a rocket, it's about course correction once you're in orbit. Yeah. It's a good space metaphor to end on, don't you think? I think that sums it up perfectly. It's about understanding that innovation is a process, not a destination. And sometimes the most valuable lessons come from the detours and the crashes along the way. We've laughed, we've learned, we've pondered the existence of a $400 juicer. Thanks for diving deep with us into the world of tech's biggest flops. Remember, the next time you see a shiny new gadget, ask yourself, Will this end up in a deep dive episode five years from now? And if the answer is yes, maybe wait for version 2.0.